Neil Battaglia, Neilian.com. I want to talk a little bit about the preserve jars and the kegs in Stardew Valley. Each of them actually has algebra connected to them in the equations. There's a lot of math built into the game actually of Stardew Valley. There are different prices, there's time involved, there's rates of change. And so the preserve jar is pretty simple. It has one equation. The one equation for the preserve jar is 2 times x plus 50. So that means the x is the base price of the fruit or vegetable. And you multiply that by 2, then add 50. So potentially, even if something had a value of 0, you would still get 50 because 0 times 2 plus 50 is 50. So that's the equation for the preserve jar. For the keg, you've got one equation for fruit, which is 3 times x. So 3 times the base price of the fruit. When I say base price, that means the price of a fruit that doesn't have any silver star, gold star, or iridium star. So if you put it in an iridium star even, it's just going to be the same multiplication of the base price times 3, which ends up being significantly more than the price of the fruit if it's not processed, but it is based on the base price of the fruit. So 3 times if it's a fruit, and then 2.25 times x if it's a vegetable. And you have to be maybe aware of how things are classified. There's a few things that you might be surprised about a little bit. So we've got three equations, one equation for the preserve jar and two different equations for the keg. There's also another consideration you want to take. And that's time. The preserve jar takes two days to complete. And the keg takes four days to complete. So the keg takes twice as long as the preserve jar. What that really means in the game is that if you have a lot, like a high quantity of the fruit or vegetable, you might want to get it processed quicker. If you have less quantity, so let's say you had, so you have 100 strawberries versus 2,000 strawberries. If you had 100 strawberries and you had a fairly high number of kegs, then you'd probably just want to put all of them in the kegs and just wait the four days. If you had 2,000 strawberries, even though it's less profitable per strawberry to put it in the preserve jar, it would take half the time. So depending also on how many of the preserve jars and kegs you have, it might be a better idea to put it in the preserve jars. And then there is another consideration, which is actually the costs and materials that it takes to build a preserve jar versus a keg. For a keg, it takes a copper bar, an iron bar, oak resin, and wood. For a preserve jar, it takes wood and coal and stone. And I would say the biggest limiting factor for the building materials is actually going to be the oak resin. You can buy coal, you can buy wood, you can buy ore, but you can't directly buy oak resin. You have to make toppers, you have to put them on trees, you have to wait for the oak resin to be created in the game. So I found that I'm, when I'm making these, it takes the most time to actually get the oak resin. And also, you might want to keep this in mind, it, it might not seem that oak resin is super important earlier on, and you can sell it directly, but having a lot of kegs ends up being pretty profitable later in the game. So here are a few examples of base prices for some fruits and vegetables. So ancient fruit, which is actually my favorite fruit to use for kegs, is 550 gold. The potato, which is a vegetable, is 80 gold. And the blueberry, which is a fruit, is 50 gold. So those are just three examples. You can always find out what the prices are, and it does maybe change with updates in the game. But you can find out what the prices are by selling them and then checking either with Pierre or in your bin. You can check what the price is for the things that you sell. So if you see, say, potatoes and you sold them and there's a certain number of them, you can divide the total price by the number of potatoes. 
You could also just try selling one at a time and it would give you the price without doing that calculation. So now you've seen the equations. You could plug in numbers. Most of them you can probably do in your head or on paper or with a calculator if you want to. Uh, the numbers aren't too bad to deal with. And sometimes you can break things down into more steps, which makes it easier to do things without a calculator. Another way to look at the equations, though, that might be useful is actually graphically. So here I've got three equations. I've got the preserve jar, which is the 2x plus 50. It's going to be a green line. I've got the y equals 3x, and y is going to be the price. I've got the y equals 3x, which is going to be the products when you put them into a keg using fruits. And I've got y equals 2.25x, which is going to be the price when you put vegetables into kegs. And all three of these equations are going to be graphed together. So here are the three lines, the green, the purple, and the black. So the green is the preserve jar, the purple kind of magenta is going to be the keg for fruits, and then the black one is going to be the keg for vegetables. So you see that they have different slopes and they have different y-intercepts. Potentially if you put in something with a very low value into a keg, like a, maybe a salmon berry or a blackberry, it's probably not worth it, even if it is a fruit. You actually might want to use the preserve jar for some fruits based on this graph. You can see that if you had a value of zero, which you're not going to have, you're going to have at least some value, but if you have a low value, it might be good to put it into a preserve jar because you get that plus 50. Even if the starting base value is zero, you get at least 50. So the 50 is more significant if the base price of something is lower. We've also got some intersection points. So here we see x equals 50. That's kind of the place where it was more profitable to use the preserve jar, but then it becomes more profitable for a fruit to use the keg. So basically, as things get more valuable, it's going to start becoming more of a good idea to use the keg. And then there's another intersection point where eventually it catches up to make vegetable juice if the value of the vegetable is high enough. So basically what that means is that if you have a high value vegetable, it might be better to actually put it in the keg than the preserve jar. But it has to be at least 200 as a base price for it to be worth it. Otherwise, you probably want to put it in a preserve jar. Let's zoom in in the lower price range of this graph. OK, so down in the lower end, you see that the green line starts up on top. It does have the lowest slope, though. The purple line has the highest slope. The black line has a slope in between. But basically, there are different areas, depending on the price of the fruit or the vegetable, which is the x in the equations, where it's going to be better to use one or the other, either the preserve jar or the cake. And we're just dealing with positive numbers here. If you want to see other videos about the math and the algebra of Stardew Valley, I tutor mathematics in Monterey, California. Basically, I studied physics in school. I got a bachelor's degree in physics, then a master's degree in applied physics. So I help students with math and physics pretty frequently. And I'm also a musician. This is my secondary channel. My main channel is Sax Station, if you want to hear me play some saxophone.